guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are talking about blood flow restriction training, which might be something that you consider adding into your at-home training program, especially if you don't have access to a bunch of weight or heavier weights than you're used to using in the gym. So right now, a lot of us are home, doing home workouts, trying to maximize our workouts to the best of our ability um, without having our regular gym equipment. And if that's you, this could be something that is really helpful in aiding in muscle maintenance or even adding a little bit of strength or hypertrophy right now. So I'm gonna walk through exactly what BFR is, exactly how you should implement it, um, and this is all based on the research behind it. So I will link the research study in the description of this video if you want to read up on it a little bit more. So blood flow restriction, or BFR as we like to call it, is exactly what it sounds like. It's the restriction of blood flow to the muscle site. So basically it restricts the venous return of the blood. So it allows blood in, but it doesn't let it back out, if that makes any sense, um, to a degree. So essentially by doing this, it creates a pump at the muscle site of whatever you're doing and it allows blood to pool at that muscle site. So it, this kind of sounds like crazy and scary. Um, it is safe and it's actually used a lot in rehab facilities, physical therapists, um, people who cannot lift heavy weights but still want to either increase that muscle strength or mass. And this is the big benefit of it with lifters, right? So as a power lifter, this is something that I used to implement in my program years ago when it first started like coming out back in 2016. I made this video and this is actually me redoing this video a little bit better because we do have more research and data on it now. But it's really great for lifters, especially power lifters who are really pushing their bodies under heavy loads a lot and you want to get in that accessory work and still get those hypertrophy gains um, without killing yourself in the gym. So the major benefit of BFR in that aspect is it doesn't leave you super sore and it allows you to recover a lot faster because the weights that you're using are really light. And I'll go into how much you should pick as far as weights go in a little bit, but that kind of covers the idea of BFR and why it could be beneficial and why it's beneficial at this time if you're working out from home and you only have like five or 10 pound dumbbells available. So before we move on, you do need a couple of items to do BFR work. Um, now, if you have resistance bands, you can use those. Um, there was no difference in like the material of the tourniquet that you're using. Um, I actually just got these medical tourniquets from Amazon. I think they come in a pack of like eight and they're super cheap. They're like, I don't know, less than $10. So if you can grab those from Amazon, I highly recommend them. I will try to look for them and link them for you guys in the description. But these are what I use for blood flow restriction training on my upper body. And there are two sites that you can put the tourniquets. You can put it right at the shoulder, right under the shoulder joint. So right here, and I'll show you exactly what I do. And then for lower body, I actually use my knee wraps. So these are basic harbinger knee wraps. Like I said, you can also use um, a resistance band if you have a thicker one and you can tie it. Anything that you can pretty much tie around the site to restrict blood flow works. The next question that I get all the time is how heavy are you supposed to go with BFR? If you go to the gym, you probably like pushing yourself with weights and you're probably going to start too heavy with this initially. It's definitely something that I did at first and you get through one set and you're like, oh snap, I can't do that. So the recommendation is about 20 to 40% of your one rep max. Now let's say we're doing a bicep curl, right? You probably don't know what your one rep max for your bicep curl is. That's just not something that we do. So you can take an estimation, um, but I just, I mean, just use what you have available. I would start with five pound weights um, for most people and just kind of get a feel for it. And then if you can go up a little bit from there, you can kind of push yourself. But it's definitely a different kind of pump than you're gonna be used to. And it's gonna feel like you're going to failure like right after the first step. So ease into it. And the recommendation for sufficient volume to see those muscle adaptations in strength and hypertrophy is about 75 total reps. So the way that we break this down is you do one set of 30 reps and then you do three sets of 15. And 
you keep the tourniquet on whatever site you're at the entire time um, and then you take the tourniquet off between exercises so for each movement you keep it on don't take it off between the sets but once you are moving on to the next exercise take it off for a second and then re-wrap and then do your next movement as far as rest time goes between sets you really only want to rest anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds max you don't need a lot of rest for this since you're not pushing a ton of weight so to recap that one set of 30 three sets of 15 with 30 to 60 seconds of rest in between then take the tourniquet off before you move to the next exercise and re-wrap how often do you want to do bfr so the recommendation for strength and hypertrophy gains is anywhere from two to three times a week. This is not something that you should or need to do every day. This is something that you can add in on top of either body weight work or regular resistance training or whatever else you are doing in your exercise programming to help with those gains or help maintain that muscle mass. It's not something that you need to go do every single day. And as far as how tight to wrap the tourniquet, that can be kind of confusing at first. Um, it's recommended to give it like a seven out of 10 tightness. And I know that's kind of hard to gauge on yourself, um, but you will know when it's not tight enough and when it's too tight, because when it's too tight, you really can't even do the movement. Like it's hard to even move. Go into it with a 7 out of 10 tightness level and then adjust based on your individual needs. Alright, so that kind of covers the exercise prescription of BFR. I'm going to get up and show you guys a few movements that I personally enjoy doing and exactly how to do it, how to wrap the tourniquets, and then just show you like the crazy pump that you get because it's pretty awesome. So, let's get to it. Alright you guys, so I have my upper body tourniquets here. So, they are clipped in, set up, ready to go. All right, so I just looped my arm in, get it all the way up, like as high as it will go, under your shoulder, and then you're just gonna pull this side of it until it's at the tightness that you want. So again, at like a seven out of 10, that's still pretty loose. Um, and try to keep this thing so it's on the outside. All right, that's pretty good. I'm gonna put the other one on and then I'm gonna grab my weights and show you just some dumbbell curls. All right, so I got my weights. I'm gonna do my first set of 30 reps. And these are seven pound weights. So for example, I usually can curl 20s pretty easily for a high set, high rep set. seconds and as I'm standing here I feel like your arms just start to feel tingly they feel um, just fatigued almost you can see we got veins popping out pump just from seven pounds so I'm gonna show you a lower body movement quick I'm gonna put a list of what upper body movements I recommend right here screenshot that if you need some ideas and then I'll show you some lower ones put those recommendations up and you guys will be good to go and switch and go to the other side. And here's a list of lower body movements that I would recommend for this. All right, you guys, that concludes this little educational video about BFR. I hope that if you are home with minimal equipment, this is something that you are able to add into your programming. I know a lot of you are suffering without the gym right now, so hopefully this can still give you a little pump and some excitement and something to look forward to within your programming if that's something that you really miss from being in the gym. So 
stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope that you make the most of your gains during this quarantine time. See you in the next video.